This is Chicago's very own WGN News at Noon. Welcome back to Wrigley Field in your 2008 Chicago Cubs home opener. I'm Tom Negevin. The players are ready. The fans are ready, too. I I'm certainly ready. I wish the weather was cooperating a little bit more. <laughs> WGN is bringing you complete coverage of it all. Good afternoon. I'm Dina Baer. You know, we have a lot to talk about this noon hour, especially we sure do. Uh, Mr. Cub, to start it off, um, receiving an award today. On a soggy day, Cubs Hall of Famer Ernie Banks honored as part of opening day festivities. Now, the man known as Mr. Cub unveiled a statue. Outside Wrigley Field, the baseball legend played his entire career with the Cubs, and his uniform number was the first to be retired by the team. Banks compared today's honor to that one. I know it will be here 100 years from now. It's a miracle to me. But it is proof that you find satisfaction, contentment in your life. Miracles can happen. The tribute to Banks will continue during the game today. He will sing the seventh inning stretch. Whenever you think of the Cubs, of course, you think of Harry Carey. The wife of late Chicago icon Harry Carey is speaking out against a TV advertising campaign. Harry Carey here to introduce Advanced TV from AT&T. You've probably seen these ads by AT&T. They feature a Harry Carey impersonator talking about advanced TV. Carey's wife, Dutchie, says the ads portray her husband as an idiot, and she's thoroughly disgusted with them. I saw the commercial one time, and it made me so sick and disgusted. I am just furious about it. What they did, so unprofessional, so jerky, any moron, I don't know. I can't even describe how I feel about it. AT&T says it received permission from the Carey estate to run the campaign. The commercials are no longer on the air. Wow, Dutchie, not mincing words on our morning show this morning. Let's get to WGN's Mary O'Claire now, who is uh, with the greatest baseball fans in the world. What do you say the Cubs are gonna win today? They are everywhere, hundreds of diehard fans, young, old, and in between, generations of Cub believers. I've been coming here since about 1969, so and we're from Iowa, and this is my son, Ben from Iowa City, little Arthur from Iowa City. So three yeah. generations of Cub fans. That's right. right. And this is the mother <laughs> of Arthur, and yeah, this is his first opening day. Oh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Hope is in the air. This will be a good year for the Cubs. Just ask the fans. What gives you such uh, such hope? I mean, well, is it is it the, the, the new player from Japan or what? Well, I really hope that he can fill out the right field. Right field is a tough place to play in Wrigley Field. But I think I just think we can do it. I'm just a Cubs fan. You know, I got all the hope in the world. We're going to win the World Series. This is the year. It's got to be the year. I mean, it's 100 years since the Cubs have won a World Series, and this is our year. It's time. And don't forget, WGN is your Chicago Cubs home opener connection. This newscast ends at 1230, followed by our half-hour special, Next Year Is Here. Then stay tuned for the leadoff man and game, of course. Well, the White Sox open their new season against the Indians in Cleveland this afternoon. Only eight players remain from the team that won the World Series back in 2005. Some of this year's new starters include center fielder Nick Swisher and shortstop Miguel Cabrera. The Sox believe those veterans will add some runs and some defense. Most of the time when you're a favorite to win just because you have a good season the year before. Uh, obviously, with the year we have last year, you, we, we should be in the league. <laughs> We didn't have we didn't have everything going at once for us last year, and it was last year was one of those years. So, just got to throw it out and, and start a new year. Mark Burley takes the mound for the Sox. Cleveland is starting. CC Sabathia has been a Sox killer his whole career. Game time is 2:05 Central. The all important question though: Will the rain hold off? WGN's Tom Skilling's uh, going to have the answer for us from the Weather Center. Hi there, Tom. Well, hello, Tom and Dina, and happy Monday and Cubs opener, everybody. Not only do we have some trouble here in Chicago with the weather, uh, the White Sox have a little bit of trouble as well. But you can see the uh, rains coming in from the west. Uh, the thinking now is we could have some. 
rather heavy downpours uh, early in the game, but that will break into the warm air. There's a warm front coming in with this, and we should see winds turn away from the lake, uh, which would turn off that fog and that cool, drizzly weather and uh, turn us much warmer mid and late afternoon, at least for a period. The new storms arrive late in the day or tonight. So we might get a hole in there after some early rains. We'll come back and have much more on that in the full forecast for the week ahead later in this broadcast. Tom, Dina. All right, thank you, Tom. Everyone from the field is going to be waiting to hear what That's Tom sure. has to say. Also had this noon outrage from community leaders and school officials as another Chicago Public School student is killed. We've got that story straight ahead this noon hour. Also ahead, under fire and under investigation over alleged ethics violations, the nation's housing chief is calling it quits. You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News with Tom Negevin, Micah Mater, and Tom Skilling. This is Chicago's very own WGN News at Noon. attack. Benadryl is more effective than the leading allergy medicine at relieving your worst symptoms like runny nose, sneezing, and watery eyes. And works when you need it most. Benadryl, you can't pause life. Welcome to Lazy Boy. Can I help you? Help me. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Not you. Where are you with the sofas? Me? Sofas. Oh, yeah. try taking a seat over here. Thanks, hon. Hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Great savings and financing this comfortable won't last long. Comfort, it's what we do. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Let me tell you about a very important phone call I made. When I got my Medicare card, I realized I needed an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance card too. One simple call gave me the chance to talk with a personal health insurance advisor who answered all my questions about Medicare Supplement plans. If you're already on or eligible for Medicare, call now to find out how an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan, insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company, helps you pay some of the 20% of your medical expenses not covered by Medicare Part B. That can save you thousands of dollars. These are the only Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans exclusively endorsed by AARP, a name you trust. When you call now, we'll send you this free information kit, plus this free guide to understanding Medicare. I can keep my own doctor and choose my own hospital. And I don't need a referral to see a specialist. Call 1-800-426-4089 now. A personal health insurance advisor is waiting. Two teenagers are due in bond court this noon hour to face murder charges in the shooting of a Chicago high school student. The shooting happened Saturday afternoon in the parking lot of Simeon Career Academy on the city's south side. WGN's Julian Cruz is live at the Cook County Criminal Courts building with the story. Hi, Julian. Hello, Tom. The accused gunman and his accomplice are before the criminal courts judge as we speak, facing first-degree murder charges. Police say the killers were trying to even the score after some kind of a fight between the victim and one of his alleged attackers. Authorities say they've got the shooters. 19-year-old Ronald Little and his alleged accomplice, 17-year-old Samuel Hill, who's been charged as an adult. Both men facing first-degree murder. But despite the welcome development, there's no joy or any sort of jubilation at Simeon Career Academy on Chicago's South Side. We have to change this gang mentality. Uh, these young people doing this shooting, these are basically suicide missions. We have cameras everywhere. We see them. They're getting, you know, they're locked up. They're not just destroying someone else's life. They're, they're destroying their own. They're here done forever. And uh, the gangs are destroying the, the future leadership of the community. Duncan says security cameras captured the brutal attack Saturday afternoon when gunmen ambushed 18-year-old Chavez Clark the 20th Chicago public school student murdered since September. And so we have to challenge the gangs. We have to challenge the gang leadership. How are they, you know, how are they creating a mentality young, amongst young people in which not only are they destroying other people's lives, they're destroying their own? It's, uh, it's, it's insane. Simeon student leaders say they plan to protest tomorrow morning at the State of Illinois building to plead with lawmakers to do something about the epidemic of guns.
shouldn't be scared to go to school. Because you wouldn't think it's going to happen, like, right after school or something. Like, he just coming out of school and just get shot. Like, it ain't supposed to be like that. Prosecutors say Hill is the alleged trigger man, while Little is alleged to have brought the 9 millimeter semi-automatic weapon to school. He produced the gun, according to investigators, out of his waistband, handing it over to Hill, who fired the fatal shot. Reporting live at 26 in California, Julian Cruz, WGN News. Thank you, Julian. The corruption trial of former political fundraiser Tony Resgo resumed today after a week's vacation. The government's star witness, Stuart Levine, is back on the stand. Today's testimony revolves around a plan to consolidate Illinois pension funds, which includes the teacher's retirement fund. Levine testified he and Bill Cellini made an agreement with Resgo, another top fundraiser to the governor, Chris Kelly, to steer investment firms to the teacher's retirement system if the governor stopped the consolidation. Shortly after the consolidation fell through, Kelly told Levine he had two investment firms he wanted to reward for political contributions, but having TRS invest in, by having TRS invest in them. A seven-month drug investigation ends with 95 people arrested in the south suburbs. Surveillance video is from the Cook County Sheriff's Department you're seeing here. Officials say it shows drug deals in Chicago Heights, Ford Heights, and Hazelcrest. Investigators say they've seen more drug deals happening during the day and when school children are around. They say 25 search warrants also led them to large amounts of cocaine and crack cocaine. Federal Housing and Urban Development Secretary Alfonso Jackson has resigned amid a criminal investigation. Jackson's problems are with the Philadelphia Housing Authority. It says Jackson cut off federal funding for a public housing program after it rejected a business deal that would have benefited one of his friends. The Housing Authority is taking Jackson to court. He says he's leaving because of family and personal issues. Today, the Bush administration is releasing the most ambitious plan for overhauling the nation's financial system since the stock market crash of 1929 and the Great Depression that followed it. Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson unveiled the 218-page proposal. It would give the Federal Reserve broad new powers to keep markets steady. It would merge day-to-day -day bank supervision into a single agency down from five separate ones. It would also create one super agency in charge of business conduct and consumer protection. The plan's been in the works for more than a year now, and key congressional Democrats appear to generally support it. President Bush left Washington this morning for a week-long diplomatic trip to Europe. He'll first stop in the Ukraine before he'll head to Romania for the NATO summit. There, he'll push to let more Eastern European nations join NATO. He'll also try to get more countries to take part in a combat role in Afghanistan. The president will visit Croatia and then Russia for meetings with that country's outgoing president, Vladimir Putin. An American soldier kidnapped in Iraq four years ago is now confirmed dead. Sergeant Keith Matt Maupin was listed as missing captured ever since insurgents ambushed his convoy near Baghdad on April 9, 2004. Back then, he was a 20-year-old private first class. The Army hasn't said how or where in Iraq Sergeant Maupin's remains were found, only that DNA tests confirm his identity. Sergeant Maupin was part of the 724th Transportation Company based in Bartonville, Illinois. His parents had vowed they would never let the Army stop searching for him. A London coroner says there is no evidence Princess Diana was murdered at the order of Britain's royal family. Princess Diana and her boyfriend Doty Fayette were killed in a Paris car, Paris car crash in uh, 1997. French and British police independently ruled the crash was an accident, but Doty's father has never agreed with that. Mohammed Al Fayed maintains Diana's ex father in law, Prince Philip, plotted to have her and his son killed. Investigators say their car crashed because Diana's driver was drunk and was speeding, trying to get away from paparazzi. Sure is a gray and wet start to the week. Tom Skilling is next with a full forecast. Yeah, bad day for that. Also ahead this noon, island hopping no more on one well-known airline. Aloha bids aloha to the skies over Hawaii. Has asbestos ruined your health? If you or a family member suffered mesothelioma due to asbestos exposure, you may be entitled to a large cash award. Call 1-800-RESULTS today to learn about your rights. Don't let time run out. You can still file a claim. Don't be a victim twice. Call 1-800-RESULTS now. If you've been injured by asbestos, call 1-800-RESULTS. Recovery. Respect. Results. You don't have to suffer. 
You just have to call. 1-800-RESULTS. I've had asthma for 15 years. I've had it for five years. I've had it for 12 years. But I just found out what the problem really is. My symptoms kept coming back. Kept coming back until I found out how to help prevent them. The real problem was I wasn't treating both main causes of asthma symptoms. Airway constriction I feel and inflammation I may not. I thought my controller was treating both, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't preventing my symptoms. So my doctor prescribed Advair. Advair treats both main causes to help prevent symptoms in the first place. Advair contains Salmeterol. Salmeterol may increase the chance of asthma-related death. So Advair is not for asthma that's well-controlled on another controller medicine. Advair will not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms and should not be taken more than twice a day. Talk to your doctor about the risks and benefits of Advair. If you take Advair, see your doctor if your asthma does not improve or gets worse. If you're still having symptoms, ask your doctor how to help prevent them with Advair. Find out how to get your first full prescription free at Advair.com. License, registration, and insurance. Something wrong, officer? And your AARP card. Yeah, here you go. Is uh, there a problem? Sure is. You belong to AARP, but you don't have their auto insurance from the Hartford. With this insurance, you're spending way too much. Oh, but I'm already getting a good deal from my insurance company. Is there a program designed for drivers age 50 and over? Somebody does that? Yep, AARP. Their auto insurance program could save you money and give you benefits you'll rarely find anywhere else. If I were you, I'd call them now. Millions of AARP members have already called about the AARP auto insurance program. They're saving $350 when they switch, and you can too. Just call this number now and ask for your free rate quote. You'll enjoy special benefits created exclusively for AARP members. Not an AARP member? Not a problem. Give us a call. Call 1-800-429-2233. You'll also get this free calculator. Call now. Today, of course, the Chicago Cubs home opener. Diehard fans braving the weather. Among them, our very own Dan Rohn. Hi, Dan. Hey, Dean. I know Tom's coming up in a second, but let me give you my prediction. <laughs> Rain. It is raining harder now than it has all morning long, and in the last 20 minutes, it's really begun to come down. I know it looks like it may pass through before too long, but uh, I think there's some doubt about the Cubs getting their 133rd championship season underway. Uh, with the weather being what it is, there hasn't been a whole lot of activity out here today. Uh, some of the Cubs players and some of the Brewers as well uh, made the long trip out to right field to do some hitting in the cages beneath the bleachers out there. But aside from that, uh, not much happening. I guess we could wait another day. After all, we've waited 100 years for a championship already, a fact that Lou Pinella was reminded of earlier this morning. I don't know how I view it. Uh, I really don't. I, I, it, it seems rather improbable. <laughs> I mean, it's a long time. Let's see if we can do something about it. That's all we can do, is do something about it. We're going to try our darnest to do that. I mean, expectations are high, um, but we have to go out there and play the game. So, you know, we like our chances. We like our team, and, you know, everybody in our division has gotten better and, and has a good team, and uh, same within the National League. So we just got to go out there and... and uh, and then have some fun and play some baseball and, and give 100%. I think if we play 100% with the talent we got on our team, that we, you know, we should win more games than we lose. Talk about the prop. Yeah, those hardy Cub fans have already started to pile into the ballpark. You see them out behind me in the bleachers, hoping for some baseball today. If they do play, it's Carlos Zambrano for the Cubs against Ben Sheets of the Milwaukee Brewers. Scheduled to start at 120. I doubt that that will happen. But we will be back at 1230 for next year is here. Our pregame special, we'll have that for you at the bottom of the hour. And then hopefully, baseball guys a little bit later on this afternoon. Okay, Dan Rowan, live at Wrigley. Thanks so much. Oh, Best fans in the world. And if today Absolutely. doesn't prove it, I'm surprised I don't know there were a lot does. of people yeah. out there behind him. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, but you know what? This rain that's going through right now is going to pass. Uh, and we're well, this is a warm front coming through. The winds have been blowing off that icy lake all morning long. That had been expected. Here's the way it's looked. It, believe it or not, buried in that time lapse is the city skyline. We're looking at Grant Park, but you'd see the ceiling right down to the surface. This air is saturated. It's cold. It's damp but um, look what's going on in the radar uh, and note that there are 60 degree temperatures in the southern suburbs already 
Uh, readings near 70 in parts of southern Missouri. Here's the rain. It's a band coming through here. You see the lightning display. It's been kind of trending downhill uh, in terms of numbers of lightning strikes. Uh, here's the situation uh, on our satellite. And you can see this arc of showers that comes out of Missouri. And this is the one running through the area now. But there's a break uh, in that, uh, that area of showers. So we'll keep our eyes on that closely. Want to show you what's going on down at the Cubby Bear right now, right across from Wrigley Field. It's 40 and the dew point's 40. That's 100 percent humidity. There's not a lot of wind, but there have been gusts of 23 miles an hour, and the rain down there is about 16 hundredths of an inch. Here's a time lapse through the morning as the crowds gather, and uh, you see it started kind of rainy. Uh, it's let up a little bit until this latest wave has come in. Uh, elsewhere in the city, it's 43 at O'Hare with light winds there. They're going to turn around to the south and really howl, and look what's happening at Midway Airport. 55 degrees, so the warm up is, uh, the warm front is through Midway with south winds at 15, and uh, that's the beginning of warmer temperatures. See the southerly winds down here? Here are the east winds. Those are going into Wrigley Field, and there's the warm front cutting right across there. And as that comes north, the temperatures are going to reflect, uh, uh, well, they'll be more like these ones down south. Look at the 53 at University Park. It's near 60 uh, down in East Peoria right now, and we have mid-50s up through the southern end of Cook County while it's cold on the north side. This warm front is northbound. Um, it's producing rains, as you can see out in the uh, western suburbs. That's Geneva. Here's Fox Lake, our weather bug camera there. But here's St. Louis. And what to note here is look at the temperature and the wind direction down there. That's south of this warm front. That's the air mass we're going to be getting into. So it's going to turn like spring this afternoon. Uh, hard to believe as that it is. It's 68 at one of uh, St. Louis's suburbs right now. Uh, the wider view across the area shows uh, the bumpy clouds right here. This is the warm front. And as it comes north, we hope there might be a peak of sun. And those south winds will start blowing uh, with gusto. You can't rule out some additional storms firing during the afternoon because this air mass is inherently unstable. Look at the effect of the vi on the visibility of the fog and the winds off the lake. It's kept things pretty pretty low as far as visibility goes. And here's a, a, another view of the rains coming in from the west. Now, this is our high-resolution model that gives us a real good look at the detailed situation. This is at the beginning of the game. Uh, watch how we break out of this and get new storms to form up here. These may grow heavy or severe, uh, and they would reach the rest of the area late today, but more likely tonight. So we'll get heavy rains early this afternoon, a break, spring-like warmth swells into the area from the south, and gusty southerly winds develop. And then as the storm goes by, the colder air that's producing snow on its backside, uh, we won't get snow here, but we will get the colder air. Look at the severe weather down to the south and our forecast of rainfall showing that the heaviest will come down south or and north of us both. It's 65 in St. Louis, but 42 here, and that 65 degree air is headed north. Peoria is at 60 at this hour, Indianapolis at 56, and even South Bend at 58. So if you get away from that lake and this pesky north or easterly wind that's been blowing quite lightly now, but expected to turn southerly and really pick up as the afternoon goes on, and that's as this storm system moves north and puts us in its warm sector before the cold air wraps around. Look at the packed isobars. It's going to blow tomorrow like a gale at times in gusts with uh, Canadian high pressure coming in. It'll be right over us, so the winds will be much lighter on Wednesday, and we will uh, warm up, presumably, in the afternoon sun a little bit, get back into the 50s again. And the flow is in from the west by and large, so after the 41 tomorrow, upper winds will tend to steer warmer weather in as the uh, day goes on. Well, here's the, the detailed forecast uh, for the Chicago area. And uh, for tonight, we expect, or uh, this afternoon, we expect uh, gusty winds and heavy rains uh, to uh, come into the area, giving way to some mixed sunshine and spring-like temperatures as the afternoon wears on. Temps should jump quickly into the 60s, except 50s far north, and uh, there'll be a pause in the showers and thunderstorms, which is good news. Then tonight, it starts spring-like and warm, but turns much colder later on after a wave of showers and storms that could produce some heavy rainfall. Winds will be south-southwest, 14 to 36. So it's going to be a windy night tonight. Tomorrow, much cooler, high 43. That's way below normal, more than 10 below normal. Early light uh, rain and sprinkles gives way to mixed sun. And then 46 to 55, warmest away from the lake with sun and increasing clouds during the day on Wednesday. And our seven-day forecast uh, shows today's 65. It's going to get there uh, late today. But it drops to 43 tomorrow, to 49 Wednesday, and 50s Wednesday, uh, sorry, Thursday, Friday, when there may be another rain in the area. So, Dan, hang in there. And yeah. everybody out of Wrigley Field, there's a break coming.
Okay. Fingers crossed for the fans. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you, Tom. Okay, guys. Some other stories we want to bring you this noon hour. Aloha Airlines grounding its planes after more than 60 years of serving Hawaii. The airline says today is the last day it will take reservations. Aloha filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection earlier this month after taking a hard hit from competitors and from rising fuel prices. The airline's been suffering since 2006 when a competing airline launched a new inter-island service. Officials are on the lookout for a cougar after a large cat was seen prowling through North Shore neighborhoods Friday. Residents and a police officer claim to have seen the more than two foot tall cat and authorities have found large paw prints. North Chicago City officials are warning residents to stay away from forested areas where the cougar could be in trees or on the ground. Only two cougars have been positively identified in Illinois in the last 146 years, but mm. the last one was in December 2004. Wow, story we'll be keeping our eyes on. Uh, we're also talking about the fans just an hour away from game time, or what should be game time. We hope, know? right? <laughs> the Chicago Cubs taking on the Milwaukee Brewers in today's home opener. It's a live look at Wrigley Field, very soggy Wrigley yeah. right now, and a quick check on March Madness is coming up next. Check out those fans, though. America's Funniest Home Videos, tonight at 7 Eastern on Superstation WGN. I've had asthma for 15 years. I I've had it for five years. I've had it for 12 years. But I just found out what the problem really is. My symptoms kept coming back. Kept coming back until I found out how to help prevent them. The real problem was I wasn't treating both main causes of asthma symptoms. Airway constriction I feel and inflammation I may not. I thought my controller was treating both, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't preventing my symptoms. So my doctor prescribed Advair. Advair treats both main causes to help prevent symptoms in the first place. Advair contains Salmeterol. Salmeterol may increase the chance of asthma-related death. So Advair is not for asthma that's well controlled on another controller medicine. Advair will not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms and should not be taken more than twice a day. Talk to your doctor about the risks and benefits of Advair. If you take Advair, see your doctor if your asthma does not improve or gets worse. If you're still having symptoms, ask your doctor how to help prevent them with Advair. Find out how to get your first full prescription free at Advair.com. If credit card debt is taking over your life, please write down this number, 1-800-CARE-123. I see people every day that are on the brink. They're going to go over the edge, and at the bottom is a bankruptcy, and we pull them back, and they appreciate it. Call for Care One Credit Counseling Services to help put an end to the worry, the collection calls, the sleepless nights without bankruptcy. You do get to consolidate your payments. You don't have to worry about making one payment a month instead of making three, four, or five. A Care One Credit Counselor knows how to listen and can help you reduce your payments, pay off debts faster, and stay out of debt. People are truly amazed when they call us and they see what we can do to help them. I mean, the relief in their voice is just, it makes the job worthwhile. Call 1-800-CARE-123 to speak to a CARE-1 credit counselor. It's 15 minutes that can change your life. And the sooner you call, the easier it is. CARE-1 for you. We can do amazing things. I'm at that place. We're saying goodbye to being a bachelor it means time to buy our first house. You know, we're combining things like cars and bank accounts and furniture. And Everything but your stinky futon. But the only thing missing is more money. Believe me, I'm there. Here's a little housewarming gift. State Farm can save you nearly 600 bucks just by insuring your car and home together. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Need a futon? I'm good. Quick check of sports, NCAA's Final Four is set. The Kansas Jayhawks got by Davidson yesterday, 59-57. Wildcats had a chance to win it with a last-second shot, but Jason Richardson jumper failed to fall. Yeah, the expression says it all. Game over. Bill Self and Kansas advanced to play North Carolina Saturday night. Rounding out the Final Four are the Memphis Tigers. Led by Chicago native Derrick Rose, the Tigers blew by Texas, 85-67. They now take on UCLA in the semifinals. A bit of history for this year's tournament. It marks the first time all four number one seeds have made it to the final four. And don't forget, WGN very proud to bring you the Cubs home opener today. First, be sure to stay tuned for our half-hour special next year is here, which is next <laughs> right here. It's right here now, so have a great afternoon, everyone. Cubs and Sox highlights tonight at 9, and if you're headed out to Wrigley, stay dry, bring an umbrella.
You live another day, I'll be very impressed. He's over, not yet. Yeah. Beware my wrath. Is she dead? Pretty much. Have a nice day. Call me Punisher. The Superstation is America's home for baseball. The Brewers and Cubs start off the season with a bang. Rivals are ready to rumble. Cubs, Brewers, today at 1.30 on Superstation WGN. It's great to be home.